things and the different waveforms and what they mean. So here's a good list of different waveforms that are available on the machine that we have in the main athletic training room. So here we have interferential, free mod, high volt, Russian, asymmetric biphasic, symmetric biphasic, VMS, VMS burst, DC, microcurrent, and Hans simulation. So in this case, we can also have a sequencing. We're going to have a mixture of these different parameters and frequencies um, waveforms going on at the same time. So going from one to another in sequence. So the first I'll start talking about is the interferential. So interferential is able to go rather deeply into the tissue based on its waveform. So if we take a look at interferential, we're able to set a lot of different parameters here, including the carrier frequency and the sweep. So you can actually sweep from low to high and go across that entire transition um, when you set this up. Normally when you do interferential, you're going to have it set up with two leads at the same time, meaning four electrodes. And normally these leads will cross over an entire span. So let's say that my electrodes would be at each corner of the screen, then my sweep would be between electrode to electrode. So if I set up uh, my first lead from here to here, and my second lead from here to here, then my sweep would be across this entire area. If I set up an interferential and I had my first lead from here to here and my second lead from here to here, then I would only be sweeping across those two lines. So it's important if you're utilizing interferential to cross them to get the entire sweep across the entire space um, if your goal of treatment is for a sweeping process. Interferential is going to go deeper than most other waveforms, so you can utilize that. But here we can set the frequency in Hertz. Normally if you're going to go for level 1 pain control you're going to set the frequency between 60 and 120 so we would have to change the defaults on this and um, then the carry frequency can be above 3000. You won't be able to change the phase duration on here so you'll have to rely on the intensity that you increase your leads uh, depending on how uh, high the patient can tolerate. Since phase duration allows you to not have the intensity be as high, uh, interferential isn't super awesome to use for level 3 pain control and it's better for level 1 pain control. So if we take a look now at other availabilities, pre-mod is essentially the same concept as interferential except everything is already pre-modulated and set for you. So here we already have the frequency set at 60 to 120, the carrier frequency set at 5000, which is going to allow us to have a wider span or sweep. And notice that we aren't able to adjust any other parameters since everything is already preset. Uh, this is simple setup, going to do level 1 pain control and go for it since we can't change the phase duration. So here we're also able to see high volt. High volt is a type of directional current or DC current where we're going to have one type of uh, polarity go at one time. So with high volt, you're normally going to use it for patients or individuals who present with a, an acute source of pain. You can change the polarity with high volt. So there are some theories where you can set the polarity of the treatment to be positive or negative in waveform. And we know through theory that the positive effects of the body, so um, the leukocytes, phagocytes, anything that's going to help with decrease of inflammation and breaking up of bad tissue and decreasing lymph uh, activity and increasing lymph drainage uh, is negatively charged. So if we set our polarity to positive, that means we're going to attract all of these good things to the site in order to increase the ability of the body to decrease inflammation at the site of pain and at the site of the tissue distress. You can also increase your frequency here or decrease the frequency. So you technically could set a level 3 pain control here with a low frequency and increased intensity. However, you won't be able to change phase duration so the patient will probably not be very tolerant of this type of uh, activity with level 3 pain control. So if you have a patient who has an acute wound or if they have um, 
a specific acute injury where you're wanting to increase the ability of the body to decrease inflammation, then you would set the polarity to positive, decrease or increase your frequency uh, around 100 to 110, somewhere between 60 and 120, and increase your intensity. So it's basically an ability of pre-mod or interferential, but being able to change the polarity. Now if we take a look at one of the other waveforms, Russian, Russian would be used to utilize the frequencies in a sense that we can use them and the duty cycle to affect the patient's ability to contract a muscle. So here we're using it more for muscular re-education. Here there's a burst frequency, so how much uh, frequency or how much contraction is going to occur at the muscle. And here the goal of Russian is not to have the muscle contract on its own, but for the patient to contract with it at the same time. So the duty cycle would be how long you're going to have it set to, so you can have it uh, contract for 40% of the time or 30% of the time depending on your goal of treatment and then you can also change the frequency of how high it's going to go. Um, the cycle time you can turn that on so you can change your ramp. Ramp is going to decrease the intensity of the automatic turn on so let's make it uh, four seconds. It'll take four seconds for the um, electric stimulation to completely contract the muscle. If you don't have any ramp time, they're going to go from 0 to 60 really quickly. It's not going to be very comfortable. So you can also change how long you're wanting to do this. So if you want them to hold the contraction for 10 seconds and have them do it with the contraction at the same time, you can do that. And you can have them have a rest period. So you can have it be 3 to 5 seconds, wherever you prefer, however you're wanting to get the muscular education to go. So Russian you can have it go through reciprocal contraction, so I can cause the contraction to occur at two different leads at the same time. So I want my hamstring and my quad to contract um, at different time periods. So I'm going to have a contraction at my quad and then I'm going to have a contraction at my hamstring. Thus I'll be able to decrease the uh, contraction of the quad while the hamstring is contracting, thus stretching the quad, and vice versa. If I have a contraction at my quad, then I would be stretching the hamstring through reciprocal inhibition, meaning reciprocal through the channel mode. We can also see that we can co-contract a muscle, so if I'm wanting to get an isometric contraction of my quad and hamstring at the same time, I can set them both up on different leads and they can co-contract at the same time based on this co-contraction setting. Here we'll also be able to see when we notice co-contraction, we're able to set the intensity of both leads at the same time versus setting individual leads. If we look at reciprocal, we're only able to set individual leads meaning that they will not contract at the same time. So if you forget which one you're looking at, remember that reciprocal is only going to be one at a time and co-contract, meaning they're both going to contract at the same time, giving that ability to us to set both at the same time. If we take a look at the specifics of another waveform, we can see symmetric biphasic. This one is ultimately my favorite. Uh, because you're actually able to set the phase duration on this one and basically make your own uh, cooking set instead of following a specific recipe. So here, phase duration allows us to make the intensity not as high, which is more comfortable for the patient, and then we can have a more intense treatment and more specific treatment for the patient's needs. Also, we can set the burst frequency here as well, so we're able to set Russian if we want, with symmetric biphasic, so you can change all of these parameters to set and fit for uh, a Russian treatment or a muscular re-education treatment. It's also going to be fit for frequency, so you could uh, decrease the phase duration to less than 100 and increase the frequency to above 100 and do a pre-modulated treatment or interferential, so you have control over how much phase duration is available. Or you can go through and do a level 3 pain control treatment increase the phase duration to above 350. I normally go about 380. And then decrease the frequency all the way down to somewhere between one to five, so you only have that many contractions happening per second. And once you get it down all the way to that point, then when the treatment is being provided, the muscle contraction will occur, in this case with the frequency, three times per second. So, pump, 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 getting three contractions and with level 3 pain control 
as stated um, in the previous module, you would want a strong rhythmic contraction. So we can also see that we can increase the amplitude modulation at the same time. So if we're wanting to have it ramp in a different phase or only go for 80% of the time, then we have that amplitude intensity changing. Here you can also turn on a cycle time, just as stated before with Russian, so we can have it ramp up and have the on time or off time. So really, symmetric biphasic is a combination of all of the other waveforms if you're wanting to cook up your own plan instead of following a preset method. Um, I prefer this, especially since a lot of these machines, the defaults are not what is set as the correct theory, and they're set for the way that the company wants them done. So you really should check the parameters, and you should be recording all of the parameters that you're writing down for your patients as um, if you're treating someone with electric stimulation, you want to make sure that you're following the correct theories. So VMS is very similar to symmetric biphasic, it's just more comfortable. Um, some people like to use this for muscle contraction, but you can also use it for biofeedback and checking the contraction of the muscle. But it's also very similar to Russian. It's a more comfortable version of Russian uh, because you're able to do the phase duration change as well as not just changing the frequency. So you can increase the phase duration to affect that instead of having the phase duration be preset. This is essentially the same as Russian, or if you were setting a symmetric biphasic, if you wanted to check uh, muscle contraction through biofeedback or a biofeedback lead. So here we're able to see that as well, and we can set up different uh, leads for that. The last uh, sectioning is DC and microcurrent. These are not highly used, especially since DC is mostly used for uh, iontophoresis, so use of a gel medium to use electricity to send uh, medicine into the skin. And then microcurrent is almost subdermal, so um, the individual is barely able to feel it. It's completely subsensory. Um, there isn't a lot of research on the, the effects of it and it being positively affected or correlated to a lot of treatments, um, but you should be able to utilize that as well if you plan to use some sort of microcurrent. But DC is very similar to high volt in that it's going to include specifics and you can change the polarity based on the reversal. Um, so you can have it change between positive and negative at the same time. So have a negative and then um, go into positive. Uh, so you can have that go automatically if you wish, or you can turn that off and have it stay on the same polarity for the same period of time. So uh, the main thing here is that uh, if we are providing a medium for some sort of iontophoresis that the gel and the pad be able to fit directly with the electrodes that we have. And the electrodes that we have um, can specifically work and fit with a gel medium, but preferably you use an iontophoresis machine where the frequency can be set specifically for that as in case here we don't have a set frequency so we don't know how long the treatment should be set for if the plan would be to use a direct current for um, the patient's treatment. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of some of the main waveforms that you can use and some of the settings that you can have. Essentially um, the only ones I really use are interferential high volt and symmetric biphasic since I can get the goals I want from each of those. I like to follow a, a cooking method instead of reading from a cookbook and having to decide what I want from those specifics. But the main ingredients that you want for your electric stimulation therapy are focusing on the levels of pain control. So remembering that level one is sensory. So here we want high frequency, low phase duration, and you're not gonna have the intensity be super high. It's going to be intense, but not painful. So with any type of level one, you can set any of these to level one pain control, making sure that your phase duration is below 100 and that your frequency is between 60 to 120. That's basically it for level one. For level three pain control, so we're gonna get muscle contraction, you want your phase duration somewhere above 350 your carrier frequency somewhere above 3500 and then your frequency should be between one and five so you want to have either one contraction a second or five contractions per second essentially a rhythmic contraction strong rhythmic contraction 
And lastly, for level two pain control, the easiest one to set for would be symmetric biphasic. Ramp it up with the phase duration being high, the frequency being